Historical Society. I have been on the board of the of the Mountaintop Historical Society since the mid, mid to late 1970s. Uh, and I look it. So, uh, uh, but, uh, and I, I did write a book called, uh, uh, called Catskill Mountain House Trail Guide that uh, I intended to be like a field guide to, uh, uh, to the Catskill Mountain House book by Roland Van Zandt. I fell, fell short of that, but it's, it's out there and I think uh, uh, it's been pretty well received, although it's now out of print. You have to search on it on eBay. It, it doesn't sell for a lot, but you can find it. Okay, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna share my screen, which is what I'm gonna do through most of this. And when I say, uh, please don't comment, I will say that uh, Pete and Paul are co-leaders of the hike tomorrow. And I welcome their comments as we're going along. But the rest of you, um, unless it's earth shattering, uh, please use the messaging feature. Okay, hi Linda. Let me, let me, oh, I need permission to share the screen. I don't know that I have that right. Okay, I thought I gave you the permission. Uh, does it say you don't have it? It doesn't, it's just not doing it. Okay, yes, there it is. Okay, and now it says share. And let me just boost this up. Okay. Uh, obviously, this is uh, the uh, logo of the Mountaintop Historical Society, and the train station is in. They finished the painting; it's been repainted. We have a new roof. Uh, the windows are going to be taken out, and they're going to be replaced. So that's the latest feature, and that's happening right now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I. It is, let's see, okay. It's a bit early, but let's see. And maybe we can start this. Now I see people too, that's good. Okay. Um, tomorrow's hike is we, I think we call it moderate to easy. I think it is. There's a little bit of a climb at the beginning, but it's not difficult. Uh, we will be walking through the woods, um, but it's a trail that was once a road. Uh, and we will go to the site of the Catskill Mountain House, drive up the Hotel Cordesco. And yes, the Hotel Cordesco is not the Catskill Mountain House. The Hotel Cordesco is the Hotel Cordesco. And uh, it's quite different and it's a competitor. So let's take a look at the hotel uh, just, yeah. just a minute as far as the hike tomorrow the level of it it is probably more moderate than easy uh only because we're going on about three quarters of a mile section of part of the harding road that went from the railroad station at south lake up to the hotel and it's not maintained as a trail or anything. Oh, yeah. There are down trees on it. You have to step over them. Uh, there is a herd path, so to speak, along it, which keeps the uh, uh, weeds and stuff cut back or, you know, knocked down. But it is not a trail trail in the sense of uh, the normal state trail. It's also not steep. It's a, it follows a ho uh, horse and buggy or a horse and wagon trail. So. The animals had to be able to get up it. Thank you, Pete. Uh, and in addition to thanking Pete and Paul, uh, I'd also like to specifically thank George Harding, uh, who uh, gave us about 50 photographs of the Hotel Cordesco inside and out that were, that were done in around 1920 when the Harding family, 
the great great grandfather of uh, of George Harding, who donated the images, was in the process of selling the uh, hotel, uh, and I think that these were done for promotional sale, promotion to sale for the sale of the hotel. The Free Library of Philadelphia, and this is where Scott, uh, uh, yeah, Scott Coster comes in. He discovered uh, a map, a, a, a diagram, a survey of the hotel, uh, uh, John Duda just entered. Uh, he, um, Harding, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Scott discovered a, a very important um, drawing uh, survey that was done probably for insurance purposes of the Hotel Cardisco that had detailed information that we never saw before. Um, the Library of Congress has a number of photos uh, online that you can that you can download. They are paid for by your taxes, so don't have any uh, concern about downloading them. But you can find them in the Library of Congress. Uh, it's, they were done by the Detroit Photo Company. They were done by the Detroit Photo Company. Uh, those people who are coming in now are coming in at the time that, that makes sense that they were supposed to come. Uh, rather than earlier, but that's all right. Uh, and I haven't covered any detail yet about uh, about the hike or anything. I'm just doing some uh, preliminary stuff. Um, so please, if you're interested in the Hotel Quarter School and you want to see some excellent pictures, some of them we're, we'll be using tonight, uh, they are available free of charge uh, from the from the Free Library of uh, from the Library of Congress. There may be a charge if you try to download the, uh, uh, the and they will they will request a send you request if you get if you get it. Um, uh, Alexander, who set this up, and of course all the people who donate it to the society's uh, archives. Okay, question. Okay, so this is the hotel Cotisco. Oh, that's quite. Uh, it never quite looked like that. This is what the architects, this was the architect's dream. It didn't have this wing on the side. The front was pretty much like this. Didn't have that porch. Didn't have, it ha didn't have a center tower. These towers on both ends, the south end and the north end. Is this, is this, is this moving too fast? The, the towers on the north, on the south end and on the north end did not have these viewing platforms. Uh, they did have a top that some people could go to, but I don't think it was common. Was it the largest mountain hotel in the world? I think maybe if you put a lot of adjectives in front, it probably was. This is what it actually looked like. Okay. And I know that sometimes these, these images are delayed, so I'll try to give them some time to come in. The main building looked pretty much like the one that was in the diagram. You can see the difference in the uh, towers. You can see that instead of building excess other wings on the main building, they solved the problem of adding uh, space by putting it by putting an annex in it. That was done later, and it's not shown on the survey map that we're going to that we're going to call up. Now you should be seeing a map of the Hotel Cordesco Park. They, they called it Cordesco Park. Uh, and in that you can see the, uh, the Hotel Cordesco. I'll bring this up. I'll position this a little bit more. Okay, so there's the Hotel Cordesco on the top of South Mountain. Over here, you can see uh, the Catskill Mountain House. And so it's about well, over a mile away. And they had a road, this road was in before the one that we're going to take. The road that starts at Scribner's and goes up the mountain and comes to the Hotel Quarterskill. And then there's another road that came up 
from Palinville. In fact, the initial way to get up there was to come up by, by stagecoach from Palinville. The house that they, the house that was there um, is, the house that they used was still there. It now belongs to Art Freeze. And the trail, it still exists. Okay, so we're going to instead start at South Lake. We're going to go, it doesn't show well on this map at all. So uh, it's good, but basically comes up here, hits this road and then comes, and it's pretty much the same route once we get to that road. This is a, a map. I'm putting these on. What I'm trying to do is to get you an idea of the of the way in which this was arranged, uh, and the way in which, uh, when we get up there, uh, the way it looks now. It's there's a lot of woods there, but we will see some signs of it, uh, extensive signs of it. Not like the Catskill Mountain House, where there's almost nothing left uh, of uh, of the of where the hotel was, except the open field. But you can again see the road that starts at Scrivener's, which, by the way, is at the bottom of was at the bottom of uh, Scott Road. You can see that there was a road that went from Scrivener's towards the Catskill, towards this towards South Lake, where the where the U and D station was. And I don't think you can believe the, the exact directions of these, of these roads. Uh, I think that they've, I think it's rather sloppy or it did lack the, the ability that we have to view things from space and, uh, and get, or depend on, uh, depend on more uh, sophisticatedly made maps, but there it is, there's the hotel. There's the annex to the, to the right in our diagram. And to the left, some distance away is a structure. There were actually several structures there, a barn, some garages, uh, and uh, I shouldn't call it a barn, it was a stable. This may take some time to come in because it's a very large image. Uh, it is three images from the Library of Congress that show uh, Round Top, High Peak would be over to the, the extreme left, and the hotel in the middle. And this picture was taken from Boulder Rock, maybe on top of Boulder Rock for all I know, but uh, the uh, area around Boulder Rock, you can see that there were no trees of any sort. They were, they were logged off burned down, I don't know what, probably logged off. And uh, the building stands there pretty, pretty big. I'm gonna zoom in on it to give you an idea of the detail of these photos. This is the same photo. And there's the hotel quarters. And also to get an idea of what's going on over here, we can see a road. Up here in top center is a portion of it and left, uh, left center, uh, yeah. The center of the left is another portion of it. I believe this is the area that this is the road that comes down from the hotel and eventually goes down into Palinville. So it was alone there. It's a beautiful scenery. And if you know Boulder Rock, you can imagine what it must have been, how, how different the, then the area may have been, must have been to be able to see that building clearly from Boulder Rock because it's all overgrown now. This is another image to get an idea of its position. 
and I will get, and we're gonna zoom in on this, but first the arrow is pointing towards the main building. This is the annex and over here are the stables. There are other buildings that are there, but you can't quite see them because they're hidden in the trees. This is a blow up of that building, of that photo. And I'm delaying only because I think it might take a little time for everybody to get that picture. And the stables are here. Okay, this image is from the, the um, got to pronounce the name right. Um, yeah, okay. This is the survey that was done for the, for the, uh, 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 for Harding, probably for insurance purposes. And it shows the buildings that we're interested in, or the, the building, the main building, and some of the features that we're interested in seeing. And the background here is the main wing, which faces more or less east, probably a little bit southeast. Uh, this wing to the left is the north wing. I'll call it the north wing. This I'll call the west wing. This is the center or kit or dining room wing, the center wing that goes down. And these buildings in the back, we're going to spend quite a bit of time looking at, especially these three. The foundations of these buildings are still there and we can find and identify them. This is uh, the HELPS water closet, the toilets. This is an ice house. And we'll see that the top of the ice house was um, was a refrigeration room for the kitchen, which was on the same level as that. So here you can compare the two, the photograph and the diagram, which makes it easier to pick out the individual things, although it doesn't have the detail. This is the floor plan, and I'm, I kind of want, I kind of want to see your faces. Um, this is the floor plan, the, the east wing, the north wing, the dining room wing, and, and the, um, the kitchen wing, the, the, the west wing. All right. So once we get to the top by the by that uh, trail that, and we get, we're actually approaching the uh, hotel. This is the road we'll go up when we we're when we're approaching the actual gra hotel grounds, and you can. What you'll see now, this field is reasonably open. What you'll see here is woods. You'll have no idea the hotel was ever there. Now we know the hotel was burned down in 1923 or so. Uh, we have the exact date. If we look at this here, is the main east wing. Here's the kit, the dining room wing. And over here in the distance is the, um, is the wing with the uh, courtyard. And beyond is the um, annex. We'll find all those things. Oh, come back for a second. This is the, uh, the, what's now a field was their main uh, was their main yard, and here we're looking at the same. We're looking from 
pretty much the same place. And we can zoom in. And see ladies playing croquet. Seeing a couple getting to know each other over here. Seeing the tennis courts. Seeing some, a very interesting feature. I'll stay here a second. This thin little wire, if you see it, is a cable that's anchored into the ground because the winds were so strong that the building was liable to get knocked down or at least damaged by the winds. And so these were supporting probably to help keep the, the, the building from, from shaking. And they were all over the place. They were in this and they were in the annex too. I'm gonna to stop for a second and see uh, if I'm getting, uh, if I'm getting any responses, any people um, who are saying, can't hear you, can't see this, can't see that. I don't know what's, so let me just see if I can get any uh, indication of, I'm going to stop sharing just for a second. Okay. I don't see any, I don't see any complaints. I'm going to assume that I can go on. Okay. I'm going to share again. And I apologize for this because I, I do. Uh, this is the first presentation of this nature that I've done with the group, and I just want to make sure that I'm not messing things up too much. Okay, this is the main entrance. And if we were to go in the main entrance, one of the first things we're gonna do there is go into the main entrance and see the lobby. We will stand where the lobby is and we will be able to identify it. We'll be able to identify it for a number of reasons. One is there was an elevator here. We're looking at the right hand side, halfway up. You see some ghost people. Uh, they were moving and the camera was slow, getting ready to enter the elevator. There was an elevator there we'll find the elevator pits, the pits where the elevators were. So once we're in there, we'll find that. Uh, to the left out of the picture, there was a large uh, fireplace. We'll find signs of that fireplace having been. So you're gonna look for those things. Whoops. If we go through these doors, We'll be in the dining room. We'll walk through the dining room. We'll be able to see the walls on both sides. We'll see where the dining room ended. We'll have a sense of how big it was. And you can see from this that at the time that this photo was taken, I would say early 1900s, uh, the waiters, I didn't, I, I, I can probably count them, but I haven't. There's a ton of them there. Uh, are all African American. Uh, I'm one source says that when the hotel was first built, most all of them were Irish, except the lead, the boss of them was an Englishman. Something about that indicates uh, uh, may indicate the, the the degree to which our prejudices in this in this world go. Okay, we're out, we're looking at the, uh, at the area in the back of the hotel where the ice house, water closets, helps kitchen, helps quarters. And this is the back half of the dining room area. Let's go uh, and take a look at it. Again, we're, we're here. The photographer is standing about here. 
and he's taking a picture this way. Let's take a look. This is a photograph from George Harding. Uh, one of those photographs that was taken around 1920. And we can identify what the buildings are here. And we'll look at them. Uh, you'll look at the foundation. The foundations are there. This is the ice house. This is a walkway between the kitchen and the ice and the build the room above the ice house, which was a refrigeration room. This the, to the left is the helps uh, water closets, toilets, and here is a cartway where the where carts could go into the um, could go into the uh, courtyard. And that's the cartway looking in, that's going into the courtyard. And again, I'm going to stop briefly because I'm just used to people looking at people's faces and getting an idea of what's going on. I am going to ask you if there's anyone who has a question, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. If there's anyone who has a question so far, please unmute and tell me so I can react to what's going on. I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Yes, I have a question. Good. Um, who who built this? Oh, it was built by a man named George Harding. He was a lawyer from Philadelphia. Uh, it's, I don't no, know. No, but I, I know, I, I know, I know that. But what people did he employ to build it? Oh, was it built during slavery time? No, no, no. I'm sorry. It was built in in eighteen uh, eighteen twenty one or so. Yeah, but that's so, no. during we we I, still had. I'm, we I'm still sorry. Had, we I'm still sorry. had 18, slaves. I'm sorry. Eight, I'm sorry. 1881. Oh, 1881. Okay. And this uh, the diagram was drawn in 1883, so it's only two years after the building was built, which is why the annex doesn't show, and it's um, uh, and it was built. Uh, Paul, do you have a? Do you know? I, I mean. Locally, who was building it? My, I know the, my under, uh, yeah, my ahead. understanding was that a lot of the carpenters came up from Cairo. And I, the number that I saw, I mean, consider that this was built primarily in 11 months through the winter. 11 months. Yeah, it was opened before it was fully finished. But nonetheless, it was open for uh, for trade. But the carpenters, my understanding, came up by way of uh, road through Jewett. Um, from Carroll. A lot of the mill work was done down in Catskill. Uh, so some of it was subcontracted out, uh, apparently at the time, uh, when they hauled per, um, materials up, kegs and nails and lumber and so forth, a lot of it uh, fell off the wagon. Sort of like things fall oh. off the tailgate of trucks these days. Uh, and show up in uh, certain markets. Apparently that also happened on this project and they went, uh, they spent a lot more money than they had to. Uh -huh. um, but they didn't, that, employ, they didn't employ I'm, any freed slaves? No, well, they may have, but you know, slavery wasn't really an issue. This is 15 years after the, uh, 16 years after the uh, end of the civil war. I'm sure there were uh, former slaves who were employed in the trades but I don't know what the degree of discrimination might have been around here. That, that's a question, that's a good question to uh, pursue. One of the other things I have read over the years is that supposedly he cleared or Harding managed to recruit just about every carpenter in the Hudson Valley for part of this, uh, for part of the project. As Paul said, it was put up in less than a year and that's a thousand room hotel what, four, five, six stories. It must have been a major uh, construction project. Even today, it would be a major project. Yeah, yeah, it would. Um, Bob, if I can add something, I know Leah Wiltsey, the town historian back in the early 90s, um, said that her grandfather was one of the local carpenters. And he said that they worked through every kind of weather. It was, it was really a bitter cold winter and they worked. Yeah. 
the other the other interesting thing is this foundation is laid up stone it's not a poured concrete or uh mortared stone foundation at all and you see that when we get there anyone else i appreciate was it only open Go ahead. i'm sorry was it only open in the summer yeah yes um yeah i somewhere we have we have our advertising I have a ton of stuff that I'll bring. Actually, probably, I probably won't be able to bring the whole ton, but I'll bring quite a bit of it. Uh, and uh, uh, we have advertising from it. We have uh, uh, any number of pieces of information will tell you uh, uh, what season it is. Uh, we know, is it the first season? Is it the 10th season? Uh, and a number of other things like that that we can look at and you can see. Uh, but basically, it was open only um, only from uh, June, probably through September, maybe maybe early October. Mm. So it was a summer season thing, and uh, they had, uh, uh, according to the uh, according to the survey, uh, there was there were a couple of employees, three or four employees that were there during the winter, uh, and again uh, to to make sure things were. Uh, in, in good shape uh, and didn't uh, the place didn't burn down, which ultimately did. Uh, How did the fire start? It has it that they were making soap. They were taking the fat that they had rendered over the over the season and they were going to turn it into Hunter or Cordesquil Hotel soap. Uh, and uh, the, the vat of fat over spilled over, caught fire, and before long the whole place was burned up. We do have uh, a number of of, uh, uh, of articles, people describing it. It could be seen in 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 uh, 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 Connecticut or uh, oh Massachusetts. Or it could be seen for miles and miles around. And it was a, it was uh, quite a disastrous fire. But as far as I know, I didn't. I don't have any record of anybody dying in that fire. Uh, there were people who died. Uh, at least one person who died when the laundry burned years before. Uh, and if we get a chance on the way back from our, our climb, we'll pass by the laundry. Any other questions? If not, I'll move on. But that's not to say don't. Is there any ask truth me. in the chicken dinner story? Oh, the chicken dinner story. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, the, uh, there's, we actually have a, a newspaper report of that chicken dinner story, and George Harding. Uh, I don't see him on the list here as being someone who's on. Uh, I invited him, uh, but he uh, he uh, has some more details on the chicken dinner story than I have uh, off the top of my head. But apparently, uh, Harding again, an extremely wealthy man. Uh, he was a Philadelphia lawyer, and I guess that had, brings on. I guess it still brings on uh, images of, uh, of of the person. Uh, who actually, early in uh, early in Abraham Lincoln's career, Lincoln was hired to help him with a site with a uh, with a with a case, um, and he was a regular uh, guest. He and his family were regular guests at the hotel, and the uh, daughter had some had some physical problems and was told that she should only eat. Uh, that she should eat chicken. She's not supposed to eat so many of the things that were on their menu. He asked that she be uh, served throughout the stay there chicken, and he said, "We only serve chicken on Sunday." Uh, that's what the uh, that's what the head waiter said. That's what when he went to Harding. That's what Harding said. He said, and the legend has it that Harding said, "If you don't like it, build your own hotel." And the next year, he started building his own hotel. Now, in, you mean I when he went to Beach? Not Beach was the person you're talking about. Yeah. Did I say Beach? No, you said no, Harding. Beach. Harding went to Beach and complained. I'm sorry. About I'm sorry. Harding, Harding went to Beach. Yes. Beach at the Catskill Mountain House. I apologize. He went to Beach at the Catskill Mountain House. And uh, Beach said, uh, if you don't like it, build your own hotel. A year later, I suspect, first of all, that the idea had to be in his mind in the first place. And uh, it makes a wonderful story uh, that uh, may or may not be completely true. 
may have a, a degree of truth to it or may be uh, the absolute beginning and end of the story. I don't think so. Okay, should we start uh, back with the with the slideshow? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. okay. Okay, we're about to go into the uh, courtyard. And let's see. This is the courtyard, the diagram of the courtyard. Um, some things to point out. This is the west wing of the courtyard that encloses the courtyard. There was a bowling alley on the ground floor. Uh, I grew up in Newburgh. Uh, there was a place in Newburgh called the uh, called the Bull Market, which was a was uh, on Lower Broadway and was a uh, great was a grocery store on the first floor and a bowling alley on the second floor. And every time you went in there, you were sure there was a thunderstorm going on outside. You don't build a bowling alley above a biz above another business. It just doesn't doesn't work out. So that was on, it was quite logically and well on the ground floor. Uh, there is, there was a stair inside the courtyard. There was a stairway to the second floor that was enclosed. There was a, a bunker to hold coal. There was a boiler house uh, to heat water and pump through the, pump through the building. There was a, a bake ovens. And a large chimney, which you can see in many of the photos. And we will walk in here and we'll try to figure out what's what there. Uh, and I'll have these, these diagrams with me so we can look more at it. But let's take a look in the courtyard. Now, what we're doing right now is we're looking towards the back of the building. This is the west wing of the building. This is the north wing. Um, and this is the chimney. And I believe these are, these are the bake ovens, which looks like they could be accessed from the kitchen itself. And if we move on, we're on the roof looking down. And again, this is the kitchen, this is the back wing, the kitchen wing, the uh, west wing. This is the covered stairway. This is the chimney. This is another chimney of sorts that was involved with, you know, I don't, probably for the bake ovens, I don't know. Um, a barrel, water barrel. This looks like it might have held fuel. So we'll try to pick out some of those things when we go there and we'll pick out some other things like, uh, uh, some other things that are on the um, that are on the survey. All right, we're looking at the the yard, the uh, the field outside that had uh, uh, the tennis courts and things. Uh, we're looking at the at the kitchen at the uh, dining room wing uh, and the south tower. And again, we, we saw this picture just a little while ago, so I won't zoom in again. There's ladies playing uh, croquet uh, and there's a tennis court there. I'm up on the roof. This is a picture from George Harding uh, looking from the 1920s George Harding photo, looking out at the, uh, at the barns. And this is, uh, what was a, was a garage in 1920. There's a rock here. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. There's a rock here and that rock still exists, but it's surrounded by trees. But the location of the rock was a clue to me to find out where the barns were. This is the same barn, but in 1902, roughly. Some of these 
Detroit Photo Company photos are copyrighted 1902. This one doesn't have that on it. But you can see it was more elaborate. Apparently, uh, parts of it were torn down, parts of it may have burned. I don't know what, but it's not this, but these are the same buildings, and there's evidence here uh, that they're the same buildings, but we won't go into them because uh, I can be, I can talk more than I can I can talk until I think of something to say. This is a 1920 shot of the uh, of the uh, garage and they did run carriage rides through here and I imagine that these ladies are there uh, to handle questions from the uh, uh, patrons about where they would ride and what, you know if, when the when the next when the next horse and buggy ride was going to be uh, they still do that at Mohonk. You can still take a, a carriage ride. You can still take a horse ride uh, around the Mohonk grounds. It's very much the same kind of lifestyle in, uh, in modern guys. Um, this is up again, just because I want to show you what we know, what we can see, the main, the main wing. This is the fireplace that I talked about. That was off to the left as we entered the lobby. And you can get a hint of the uh, of the uh, annex wing or the annex building. But here we can see the bridge that went from the main building, what's left of the bridge after the fire, of what from the main building to the annex wing. And we will we'll go down in here and take a look and see what we can find down there too. That's the same bridge. You can see that it had an entrance. Then you could walk. You could go from one of the higher, from the higher uh, rooms, and you could walk along the top of it. And this picture, oops, this is a picture of the uh, of the annex. You can see cables supporting the annex, the same way they supported the uh, some of the tower wings. And I. Think. Oh, okay. Same view. This is a Library of Congress shot. I'm pulling this up because maybe you can see this. I'll give it time to settle on your computers. This is a Library of Congress shot. The, the original negative was broken and the piece lost, apparently, but uh, it tells us that there was, it's pointing to the lake via road. So this is probably the road that we're gonna go down or up. A road that went from, went to the lake. You could go to the lake via that road. You could take the lake by a shady path. So there was a trail, there was a both there, and there were several other things. One up to Hermit's Cave, which I think is probably now called Bad Man's Cave but I don't know that for sure, uh, to the mountain house, to a spring called Hygieia Spring, which is on some of the other maps. I've found that. To the playing ground. So that's kind of interesting if you hike the area that we have a sign, uh, a, a sign pointing to the trails. We don't have the trails on the map. We're inside the bridge. This is the only picture I've ever seen of inside the bridge. This is courtesy of George Harding's great great grandson, George Harding, George M. Harding. And I don't know that another picture exists. If it does, well, there probably is one somewhere, but I've never seen it. Why would you go over into the annex? Well, that's where the ballroom was. Hotel Cordeskill, July 8th, 1893. The presence of more than 50 charming young women attired in exquisite gowns made the opening ball of the season, which was held in the Cordeskill Ballroom this evening, the most brilliant society event ever held 
in this fashionable resort. Guests arrive during the whole afternoon to attend this great ball and the ballroom in the, some, in the annex of the hotel was filled with, seven, with several hundred people, among whom were many charming debutantes. We have a photograph from one of our board members, Joanne Ainsworth, from the, who uh, uh, is, is a Twilighter uh, with, uh, with a note on the back by the, by the young girl, by the, uh, by, uh, the woman who wrote it, uh, talking about when she was a young girl, looking out at the hotel and saying that she'd love to go up there and watch uh, and go to the ballroom and see all the, all the beautiful women with their, with their sparkling diamonds. So it was, uh, must have been quite an event. This is the ballroom. Uh, it had to be on the first floor because there's a door on the left center and there's a door on the right center. All the other things are windows and you don't have a door. There's no balconies that I know of. You don't have a door going out to the, uh, to the open space on the second or third floor. Well, that's essentially it. I could go with a lot more, uh, but that's essentially the overview of what we're going to see. And we can open it again to questions. And if you'd like, I can probably pull up some other photos, but uh, there's the building. And I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Bob? Yes. Uh, the original concept of this was sort of to, uh, in addition to the hike and, and, and the information about the building itself was kind of to uh, have sort of a, for want of a better term, a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we did, I did today, uh, I made up, and I don't know if this will show up very well, but it's a sketch plan based on Harding's plan. And it shows the salient features that we can find on the ground. Uh, Folks, if you want to see that picture better, if you go to view and say speaker view, uh, Paul should come up as full screen. Oh, yeah, okay. So I'll hold it up. Okay. And basically, it, it just shows the things that, that we can find. I've, I've seen pretty much all of these to some degree. Um, and the, I've got enough of these to pass out once I know how many people I've got. Um, it looks like we've got about 19. Uh, so I'll make up plenty of them to pass out. And I thought once we got on site and everybody's gotten oriented, if they just want to drift off and, and look for various things uh, and check them off on the map if they're so inclined, uh, it might make a little bit different uh, approach to the hike. Um, there's an enormous amount of glass and porcelain debris in what yeah. I think is the what north northwestern corner. Yeah, um, which is really interesting. Well, those, yep. those rooms apparently had their own bathrooms instead of having the common bathrooms that the usual chamber, the, all the other chambers had. So when that fire happened, you've got what is it, five or six stories of rooms with bathrooms that collapsed and everything just came down on a single footprint. So oh, it, my yeah. take on it is that's why you have such an accumulation of broken porcelain there. Uh, now, are we talking about, whoops, am I, yeah. Are we talking about um, the, um, are we talking about the main building, are we talking about the annex? Because main I know there's a great deal of porcelain in the annex more so yeah. than the main building. Yeah, I think I think the uh, each of the towers made a big contribution to the uh, accumulation of broken porcelain. There's also a lot of glass, which looks like it was just yeah. dumped there um, in that same area, and I, like it was a garbage dump almost. Um, and there's a lot of it. Okay. 
there's a garbage dump behind the main hotel. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was in that general area, there was a two story building uh, that we have, we have photos of uh, that uh, was a frame building. It has some, Paul noticed the other day when we were looking at a previous version of this, that same building. Um, and maybe I can pull that up um, that, uh, but there's, and there's a piece of garbage cans there and things like that. There's also a pond in the back. Right. Um, there's, um, uh, and the pond was, was apparently a reservoir. Uh, there was, a, there's a, um, let's see, there's a, um, large circular stone thing that goes deep. Right. There's, uh, uh, frogs living in there that have never seen anything else. They think that's the universe. Yeah. Um, there's a pond near it. Uh, there's another stone building that we'll go to on the top of a hill that was probably a large was probably a larger uh, holding tank or such. There's a water tower up there. Watch remain. There's there's the footings of a water tower up there. Um, quite a few other things to see around the property. There's a trash dump up there somewhere too. It's it's off to the south side of uh, off really off to the south side of the whole yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, the the after the fire, I don't know how many years the state bought the property or acquired the property somehow, and at that point they cleaned it up or cleaned out most of the uh, metal and stuff, probably scrapped it, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So portions of the south end of the building have been kind of obliterated because of that uh, from not it's not much but it's gone and as uh, Bob was saying it's been 100 years or more well maybe a little about 90 years since they cleaned it up and a lot of trees have grown in it's really reverting quite a bit back to uh, forest I mean it looks like a young woods but it's still pretty heavily treed. So anyhow, true. but the other thing is all of what Bob has said might sound kind of like, you know, you don't really know what's going on, but when you get there, it'll all fit into place because you'll see it physically on the ground where these things were and it makes a big difference. So much so I would say that when when I first had the combination of the uh, of the of the plan that's now in the possession of the uh, Free Library of Philadelphia, um, and uh, and in combination with the photos from George Harding, it was like the building almost appeared uh, in front of me. And I think most of the people who've seen both and been there at that time with, with those two reference sources feel the same way about it. Like I've never, I mean, I've seen the pictures, but now I feel like I'm actually there. Pete, do you feel yeah. the same way? Yeah, I do too. I, uh, I, I don't know, it was two, two years ago or so that you, myself, Mike Kudish, Titus, and I think a couple of other people were up there. And we were like kids running around. Now that we knew where things were, we were like a bunch of kids running around looking for this, that, and the other thing. Right. And the fact that the fact that the um, that the survey uh, has measurements on it, how many feet long this was. I mean, it's it's a wonderful resource and it's existed since 1883 and no one up here has ever mentioned it in any documents I've seen. I mean, thanks to thanks to uh, Scott Coster. Um, you know, an email to him. He said, look what I found. And it, it drove us, you know, I mean, it totally turned our focus onto the Hotel Cordesco, uh for the first time. I mean, we went there, we knew, we, knew the, we knew there were foundations there, but to have this document, and then not only the document with the picture in it, but we have a list of what they had there. We have a list of 
where the, the, of, the, of the water tanks that were used uh, to supply water pressure to the building and how many gallons they held. We have the, um, the brand of the electric light arc system that they had, that uh, uh, they had a machine to manufacture gas for gas lighting. It was designed by the man who invented the machine gun. And there's all kinds of things that uh, uh, will take history nerds like me, I'm, I'm a science trained, but a history nerd when it comes to this, uh, that, uh, you know, it's just, it's a wealth of information and there's just a whole bunch of individual uh, clues to other things. And once you get a hold of it uh, and uh, put all the information together, and I have, uh, I don't know if you can see me or not, uh, I have uh, two folders of information that I've collected over that belong to the Historical Society. Uh, and I have uh, copies of Harding's pictures. And so, so we're going to play, we're going to have these with us. Uh, and uh, uh, we can, we can at least explore some of those questions. And the society is open on Fridays uh, from, uh, uh, from one to five, I believe. Uh, Alexandra is usually there on Fridays. Uh, and these books will be available for you to thumb through if that's something you would like to do. Uh, an, in, an interesting observation that uh, it comes from Ricky Brooks, who's a surveyor, but uh, he led a hike up onto uh, South Hunter Mountain a few years ago uh, to the site of the Fenwick Lumber Company which operated up on there uh, from uh, about 12 or 14 years until 1918. And they cut everything uh, six inches and bigger for uh, a lot of it went into the building of the Ashokan Reservoir, uh, various structures and, and uh, the construction railroad and so forth that they had up there. but. He made the observation at one point. He said, just stand here and look around. A hundred years ago, the site was leveled. He said, what you're looking at now is a hundred year old forest. So if you want some concept of what a hundred year old forest looks like from a hundred years ago, you know, starting a hundred years ago, this is a good spot to do that because it's almost a hundred years ago that it burned down. And that was pretty much a totally clear site at the time. So it's, an, it's just one of those interesting observations. You can look at the various types of trees, see what they look like. Uh, the biggest of which are about a hundred years old. The fact is we, we live in a great place and a great place attracts people for lots of different reasons. I mean, some people come just to, just to hike. Some people come to look at the forest. Some people come to look at the flowers. Some people come to try to analyze the history and Sometimes you go on a hike with all these different kinds of people with you at the same time, and you want to have a hike that would be able, you'd be able to walk in about an hour and spend a day there you to go with a group like that, because everybody has their own uh, interests in these things and uh, uh, brings a different, diff a different look to them. Yeah. It looks like we're going to have good weather. Great. Any other questions? Okay. When did, I mean, the fire, when did the fire start? What month of the year? It was, in, I believe, in September. The season, had, the season had just ended. Oh. So, and apparently, it was a reasonably successful season. The season had just ended, uh, and. I mean, in today's economy, you can't imagine someone hiring uh, employees to, um, to boil down fat and to turn it into soap. <laughs> Just, you know, you, 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 can buy, you can buy a cake of ivory for <laughs> next, next to nothing and, <laughs> or whatever soap you happen to want to use. Uh, I think so, so ivory, I guess, is the most soap-like thing that is on the market right now. Um, but... Uh, they did. And none of those people got caught in the fire? No, I think they, they, they turned tail and ran. And uh, the place went down, went up in flames. 
it took the uh, it took the annex with it, uh, and it probably took some other buildings. Uh, there were nearby buildings that I know were sold that were that it existed at the time that the Harding family sold it to Tannenbaum, uh, uh, who um, who purchased it. Bob, yeah. Bear in mind also that this fire was what 23, 1923. This building was on top of a mountain. The closest fire companies were probably Haynes Falls, Palinville, oh my God. Cairo. It. I mean, it, <laughs> and you know, uh, vehicles were not that all, all like great. Model T was, you know, the top cars. So there, there was no Haynes Falls Fire Department at that point. At that time, okay. Then Tanner's um, or whoever. Bob, I have a clipping of a of the uh, account of the fire. It says uh, September 8th, 1924, because the uh, the article was printed on the 9th. I don't know what paper it's from. I'm off by a year in my estimate. I only have the clipping, but uh, I, I could read it, but it would probably take about five to eight minutes, I would think. There's a lot here. We can take, we can take, um, we can take some of the pictures that we have and maybe uh, maybe some of the clippings, and we can put them on our website. Uh, and uh, in response to this, uh, and I'll at least set up the I'll set up the website to do that, and we'll see what we can get uh, on there, or perhaps on our Facebook page. Yeah, you know, yeah. And uh, Gary, if you want to put that clipping on our Facebook page, that would be uh, that would be a good idea. Now that I have time, I might be able to get to some of these things. Uh, that's, that's I the most you can do. I know. some things over the next couple of weeks. Okay, okay, but we'll see if we can get some of those things. And I have I have clippings too uh, of of about the fire, uh, about the fire at the hotel. We can we can see where the interest is, and we can see what we can do about that. Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd be curious to know how many people who are on the, uh, the Zoom meeting tonight actually are going to be there tomorrow. And if you haven't already signed up and we per, if we piqued your interest, uh, we can we can get you. Uh, you can come on the hike. I mean, we're, we don't have that many people listed on the hike. Uh, and uh, I'd say probably if we can get up to we can get up to 15 and still be within the state's guidelines. And we have three of us, so we could probably split into three separate hikes that are doing the same thing and come up to with 45. Nah, we're going. There's two okay. over here. Okay. Okay. I have, we are, you're already on our list, Joan. Yes. Yes. Linda, are you coming? You're, you're, you're muted, me. Linda. I can't come to the cannot come to the hike, but this was so much fun to listen to this presentation. Oh, good. And Bob, I love that quote. So you said something like, "I can talk until I think of something to say." <laughs> Hilarious, but you did a great job. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there's a lot of truth in that. <laughs> so. Thank you. It was very, very informative. Really great. Thank you, John. See you tomorrow. Yeah. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Bob. Gary, are you coming? I, I'm not. My hiking days are over, yes, at least can. till I get an, uh, a right knee. Okay. <laughs> Dee Dee? You want to say something? Just pre press. Or if you go Can't make it. With red. Okay. No, up on the screen. George? Oh, leave, it? right. Leave. Yeah. Bob, um, I I just te um, texted you uh, here on the chat room, on the chat, and Beecher Smith, historian from Lanesville, he knows a lot about a lot, told me that the water at the quarter school had already been turned off for the season, which is why they never used the fire, oh. the fire system, the uh, sprinkler. Certainly a possibility. Uh, oh, and, uh, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, I and without any reflection on Beecher, I mean, I would want to see some uh, I, I would want to see some uh, yeah, I just experienced a, I'm just a report of that that's trustworthy. You can't even you can't even trust all of the uh, uh, all of the newspaper articles that you read. You know that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, one <laughs> newspaper article for the uh, for the fire at the uh, 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 at the uh, 
laundry has it a fireman was killed. There, another one says that a, a young man was burned to a crisp. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, it's saying in today's in today's society. Uh, we're politically correct. They are a crisp in a newspaper article. I don't know. So anyway, thank you, thank we, you. Know that, we know there are we know there are errors in some of the uh, newspaper articles, or maybe we're, maybe our understanding is just maybe we're wrong, and they really uh, something happened that we don't have good evidence for. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen, and um, tomorrow at nine. Tomorrow at nine. Uh, we'll meet South at Lake. the. Uh, yeah, now, okay. I, I think the publicity out says we're going to meet at the historical society, right? Yeah. That's oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we better we better stick with that. Uh, however, we and and not all the publicity says we're going to start. Some of the publicity says we're going to start at the Laurel House uh, parking lot. We're going to go to the Laurel House parking lot. We're now going to go to the south. Uh, into 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 a North Lake campground. We're going to make the first turn down the bottom, down to the bottom of the hill, where the uh, where the dam and the bridge across the stream that goes from South Lake uh, is. So it's you enter, you make the first right hand turn, you go down to the bottom of the hill, and there's a little parking area there. That's where the train station was, and that's where we're going to park. And if we're there by 9:15 or so. Um, uh, that would be that would be good. Uh, so if you want to go directly there, uh, be there around nine fifteen. Uh, Alexandra, you have something to say? Oh, do I? I? Well, your name just flashed up as being the person who's made the most, who's made the, who's who's had some sound recently. Oh no, maybe maybe it's probably, maybe it's probably background sound. But I, I'm oh, going to okay. be there. I'll be meeting you all at South Lake tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. Bring lunch. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, I can't say how long it's going to be. I mean, uh, I, we, during the hike fest in the past, we've had, uh, we've had a lunch at noon at the train station. And it was always an effort to get back to the train station at noon. Uh, once we're up there, it Pete is and I possible. never had any trouble. Huh? <laughs> Pete and I never had any trouble. Oh, no, 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 no. I know you didn't. No, it wasn't you. We're not referring to you. <laughs> um, I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to share the screen. And I'm going to go back, if I can, uh, to, um, let's see. Uh, OK. Yeah exit out of that and go back to the Harding map. Okay. So if we look at the Harding map, which we'll have up there, if anyone does leave early, uh, on the way down, yes, we're gonna go up this way, but we're going to take this other path down. And that's gonna end up right at the foot of uh, of Scott Road. If you go to the left, you'll go to the ho to the water to the <coughs> Laurel House site in Cordesco <coughs> Falls. If you go to the right, it's a little bit longer walk. You go back to where the cars are. So if you've parked your car here and you have to leave early for any reason, you don't have to go down that trail because you could, I believe. That trail could be confusing if you if you've never done it before, but this road down is just get on it and stay on it. Don't make any turns until you get to the bottom, and you will be uh, just um, you'll be just the Cartersco Falls will be just to your left. Well, a short walk to your left, and the and your cars at the at South Lake will be a little bit longer walk, but level to the uh, lake. And if time permits and interest warrants it, we'll stop at the Hotel Cordesco Laundry and take a look at that. Okay, so that being said, 
we will. Say thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Great. You're welcome, folks. And thanks for coming. And I'll let you uh, sign out. And when enough people have signed out, that convinces me that no one wants to hang around for another ten minutes or so. I will. Uh, uh, I will close the meeting. I just want to thank say, you. nice job, Bob. You're getting really good at this. <laughs> okay. Very enjoyable. Thank you. Okay, you're very welcome. I was happy to do it. See you, Gary. Bye. It's good seeing you, Paul. Yeah, likewise. <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> okay, thanks, folks. And, uh, Okay, so we'll see each other tomorrow. And uh, okay, very good. Looking forward to it. I'm going to make Thanks, about any of those maps. I don't think we need them all, but. Uh, no, I don't think we're going to have. There's not that many people that have signed up for the for the there, hikes as we have. Nathan, here. I think, said he's not coming, or a couple of other people that said they couldn't make it. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dee Dee's not coming. Gary's not coming. Okay, so well, we probably got about a dozen or so. That would be wonderful. And yeah. there may be people who didn't come to this and who haven't signed in uh, yeah. to go on the hike who will be uh, unannounced shows. And uh, we've usually, we've never really rejected them. However, we're going to have to have them sign the uh, uh, the uh, list so we have a record of them. And yeah. uh, we, we should look at, uh, we should look at our... Um, disclaimer and i didn't i mentioned i should have meant i should have mentioned in this that uh, uh hiking hiking has its inherent uh dangers yeah. so we'll, we'll we'll be sure we'll be sure to announce that uh tomorrow and tell them that they don't want to accept the inherent dangers they can follow us, but they can't join us. <laughs> we can't uh, keep them. My, my theory is you can't keep them from walking on the state property. It's not yours to stop them. Yeah, true. Okay. 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 okay so good job, everybody. See you tomorrow. Okay. See you in the morning. Take care. I'm leaving. Bye. I'm just